Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today is match day for the women's team for the third time in the club history. They return to St James Park, taking on Bradford City this time in a huge game of football. Because of the fact we dropped two points last week in a 96 minute against Hull City, it now means Newcastle have to win every single match this season and I would score down session in order to win the league. Only first goes up in this league, which I think is crap, but only first goes up. So it's up to the girls now to make sure that it's us doing that. But anyway, if you're new around here, make sure you get down there, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button you enjoy. Uh, I'm all dressed up today because I'm in the, the press area essentially. So I thought for the girls, we've got nice and fancy for them to show my appreciation for the women's game. But it's going to be a great game of football today. I'm expecting us to beat Bradford City. No excuses, that's St James' part. I'm expecting probably around 20,000 people to be there today. Get inside there, let's make all the noise we can and make sure that the girls can come away with a free point. Hey guys, we are back with Darth Vader. What are we thinking for the women's match today at St James's Park? Yes, well, they're doing very well. They're up the table. They're going for the most. I think they'll get it this season. Doing very well. I think the ladies, you're looking at probably 3 0, 3 1, I think, something like that. Yeah, definitely, at least. Yeah, they're doing really well pushing. Come on, they're not. And finally, just regarding the food bank, just how important is that people donate? Even in, if they've got so much as 50 pence a pound, just how important is that money anything, to the food anything, bank? Given anything, like this. For what's going on, the cost of living crisis, the fuel crisis that's all being caused. Like says, there's people out there that just can't manage and there's people that can. And like says, I know we're all struggling, but you can always give a little. Just a little something, a little anything, anything helps. Like you say, 50 pence, pounds, anything you can give. It all comes and it goes to a worthy cause. It does, like says, there's someone out there who needs help and that's what these people do. We're here, like says, this is what we do. We're, there's people, we support our local people. We, we do it all the time, that's it. If people fall, that's what we're here to do, help them. But uh, yeah, like this is so very important. Please give all Darth Vader come to you. Well, appreciate it, Darth. Well, we spoke and made a force be with you. <laughs> made a force be with you too, Adam. Alfie, Oscar. And what are we going to say for the score today against Bradford? 3 1. 3 1. And finally, who is your favourite Newcastle United women's player? Hello, I'm Sean from Maidstone. And I'm correct in saying this is actually your first time in Newcastle for over five years? Yeah, five years and one day since we beat Arsenal back in 2018. Um, yeah, just a delight to be back up here, to see the Lady Mags. Just an opportunity for some of us Southerners to get up here and, and see a game because of Covid and you know all the takeover, this sheer increase in demand that we've had over the, year, you know, over the last 18 months. And it's just a great occasion. Hopefully we get over the 30,000 that Mayor Dad and everybody wants. And hopefully it's going to be a great day, lovely weather for it. And um, keep on doing the great work on your channel, Adam. Love it. So I'm just currently sitting inside the press area now at St James's Park. So this is where on a women's match day, content creators such as myself actually get well, thank you for for us, uh, content creators such as myself actually get these press passes which allows us to come in and obviously do stuff for the women's team. I've had to wait till the match is on because of how loud the music actually is, but pretty much um, it's a great opportunity to actually go and speak to staff members from the club as well as meet local journalists. So George Corton for me like you know quite a big journalist, it's actually a good opportunity to come down, build relationships or channel is our local media and it's, it's almost kind of how to uh, put a little bit of a plate in there for you so that's a great perk from that after the matches where you get to go in the press conference area speak to Betty Langley ask her some questions 
Hopefully no one's going to ask us any horrible Saudi Arabia questions, but no, I'm going to be lovely after the game. Hopefully it's three points on the ball for Newcastle. Uh, as well as that, you get to also interview with some of the chosen players pitch side. It's a great opportunity. And for myself, I've actually got a chance to go and meet Amanda Slavery today. So it's a great day all around for fans. It's a great opportunity for content creators. And it's thanks to you guys I'm in this position. So thank you very much. It means a lot. Half time here at St James' Park, Newcastle United 2, Bradford City 0. Bradford City have not had a single shot in this game, and that's summed up how this match has been so far. Dominant from minute one from Newcastle, we have not left them a sniff of the ball. Reminds me of the Villa match from yesterday, but I want to get that out of my mind now. On the giant screen, uh, we are welcoming onto the pitch our women's development side, who are fresh from beating Middlesbrough 2-1 this morning. We like that, and they are going to walk onto the pitch and get on the big screen. Come on, ladies, let's have you on the pitch, please. Milk the moment because they are proudly showing off the reserve division plate, which they won last month, beating Portsmouth 3 0 in the final. It was held at Sonny Hall Arco Arena. We have goals from Jasmine Way, Sean Wilkinson, Georgina Sprague. We've also got another special guest, Pitch Shines, and ladies and gents, uh, would you please welcome Amanda Stavely, who's with us. Amanda, it's all progress. We've got the development side lifting the trophies. We're winning by two goals to nil, and you must be very proud of yourself. Very, very proud of the girls and the women today, and our amazing developments have just been amazing. And I was I'm sorry, so it was so lovely to be able to do so well. Two men, girls are well done, fantastic. But are they amazing? They're just amazing. It's all about the vision for you uh, and what's in store in the, in the future. Are you happy with the way things are progressing so far? Just so happy, so proud. Uh, we've got a long way to go, but it's you know, just thank you to everybody. Everybody here in the stadium today has come to support us. It means a great deal to, to us, to, to Murdy, to Ladies and gents, please put your hands together for Amanda Stavely! We've got two more special guests, uh, Ben Shine as well. Uh, Georgina, uh, proudly showing off this trophy. I know it's not about silverware, but I imagine you're pretty proud uh, to, to be making this kind of progress so far. Oh, absolutely. I think we didn't really expect it to be fair. I think we're a fresh new team, kind of new players playing together, but I think and moments like this at St James's Park in front of this fantastic crowd who've been brilliant. How does this all feel for all you guys? Oh, incredible. I think they're coming out of this support and the other girls playing, but I think it kind of motivates you for being that player. You want to be the ones playing on this pitch, and I think it's exciting to see others have the opportunity, but obviously deep down you'll be doing it. Ladies and gents, put your hands together for Georgina. <laughs> Call me one proud coach. How you guys have been welcomed in and how you've been given that platform now? Yeah, absolutely. I think like the UK from obviously the base, which is the development team all the way through the first team, is just phenomenal. And to be a part of this in this stadium, it's like a dream come true for coaches and players, um, especially when you go along with the club and massive supporter of the club as well, having the opportunity to coach a team on a national stage and then win that trophy and then with three percent of both years. Absolutely fantastic. Congratulations. Ladies and gents, put your hands together for Courtney. The official attendance here at St James's Park today is 24,092. Wow, what an afternoon and an absolute gold fest. 
here with St. James's Park. We hope you enjoyed it. Before we turn today at St James Park, Newcastle United 6, Bradford City 1. What a convincing game of football that was. Second half, we needed to score the goals in order to catch Dylan Sestria in terms of goal difference. And because Dylan Sestria uh, went on to beat Leeds 2-0, our 6-1 win actually puts us in the exact same goal tally as them. And we have two more games than Dylan Sestria. So they got one more, we have three. Realistically, Newcastle won all the games, you're naturally going to have a higher goal difference. The only way this can possibly be out of Newcastle's hands now is if Dylan Sestria, surely where last game of the season, somehow wins 6, 7, 8, no, then we're screwed at that point. But that's unlikely to happen. So I think Newcastle have definitely got the result they wanted today. They had to, of course, win the games now, but it is in their hands to win the title once again, despite dropping two points last week. But as for the match today, though, I mean, I think the score ain't speak for it. So, two goals from Charlotte Potts, two from Beth Guy, one from Georgia Gibson, and finally the penalty kick from Virtual Lee. I mean, it was so easy. Uh, their goal wasn't even a shot, to be honest. Uh, it was a free kick, crossed it in, it just managed to flick itself into the corner. Good finish, but she definitely didn't mean to do that. Uh, and he cast the control. It could have scored more. I think 6 1 it is a fair result. I think we were miles ahead than Bradford City. Listen, that's three matches done now St James's Park. We won all of them. Uh, that was 24,000 fans today. It was 4,000 less than last time. But you've got to remember as well with the context that last time um, we had no football on whatsoever. Whereas today, even when there's matches on Arsenal away at West Ham, we've got Newcastle fans watching that game. 2-2 two -two at Arsenal. We dropped two huge points. And afterwards, we've got the Manchester United game on. So I think it's a case that a lot of Newcastle fans or maybe casual football fans want to kind of watch them now. So... Yeah, 24,000 unbelievable number. That's three times more now, over 20,000 consistent numbers. This is the highest attendance ever as well for an FA Women's National League match. Incredible. So full time here at St James's Park in Cassie United 6, Bradford City 1. We are joined by goal scorer in both parts of the game today, Charlotte Park. That's it there, you scored twice at St James's Park, your first ever appearance at this ground. How's that for you? Absolutely fantastic. I mean, I love playing out on the back and playing football. And we knew we needed to get the goal tallies on. So as well, you have to think clean sheets, but positive thinking, positive mental attitudes, attacking football. And good. What? Hey, young man. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's so important. We've got to use last season to kind of drive us. Uh, last week, so he gave them that penalty away, the goal scoring that penalty. Something we said at half time. You, when it comes to the get stuff out here and you get tired, think about that penalty, think about Liverpool Reds winning the league last season and really use it to drive them. Uh, we don't want to feel it again. We want to be on kind of the receiving end of the trophy next uh, the end of the season and we want to win the league. So, so something we're all working for. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think set pieces are so important and we've got another four set piece goals today which is brilliant but that's something we work a lot on and um, we recognise that in our league that's an area we can really dominate um, and we do a lot of work during the week on Friday evenings especially on the set piece stuff so we're absolutely delighted that we've come off and yeah brilliant brilliant headers from Charlotte Potts and Beck Guy. Just finally there was a bit of significance in terms of the amount of goals you scored the fact that you gave the players almost like 20, 30 seconds to celebrate that we're going to get the ball back on the halfway line. Yeah. How much was that mentioned before the game or at half time? We also have a quick word on this for support today, over 24,000, as you've mentioned. Do you, do you get used to this now? <laughs> I think, with regards to the goal difference, I think it was really important that we obviously kicked on and make sure it was a high scoring game, but we didn't want to ensure that the focus wasn't taken away from actually winning the game and gaining three points. So. For the first half we just focused on can we get two to three goal cushion and then from then on then we start getting the ball back as quickly as we could to the centre circle and, and go from there so brilliant we scored six I'm frustrated in the first half we didn't convert some more of those chances I think we ended the final third about 17 times in the first half um, which again we have people doing the stats to ensure we're really fully informed and in everything we're doing so yeah we're disappointed in that disappointed in the fact we've kept, not kept a clean sheet um, but yeah, overall dominant performance and we'll, we'll just
just celebrate that now. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching the video today. It's been a pleasure to come down and to once again talk about the women's team and to interview the players and question Becky in the media suite after the game. There wasn't much to question for today's performance, although it was solid all around. Newcastle deserved to win that every single day of the week. And we've managed to score a bunch of goals as well, which puts the pressure on doing Sestra going into their final game of the season. Three more for Newcastle now, win all of them. And you probably expect to win the league unless Dylan Sestra somehow scored loads of weight at Chorley. That's the only thing that's stopping Newcastle winning this league if we win all our games is if Dylan Sestra somehow will score loads against Chorley, which realistically they're not going to do. So I would argue that the league is now in Newcastle's hands. Still got a few more games to go. A couple of hard games in there as well with Newcastle. We've got that momentum going forward. We've got that confidence once again. We need that one last push of the season. Otherwise, it's in our season of 40 tier football. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, obviously, Murdered likes my suit. I mean, of course he does. He knows. He knows uh, fashion sense. But yeah, <laughs> hope you enjoy watching. Take care. Great win today at St James's Park. Get in there.